Mr. Murphy, to answer Ms. McMullen's to, question. To correct the record, we, did, we stopped any proceedings until after the conclusion of tonight. Once it became apparent that we would not gain access in time to do any definitive work prior to town meeting, I stopped the process, which John won't like this, but stops your little meter from running. Uh, so, so that's on hold. In terms of will it, will it, will it, uh, will it, will the fact that our, our process was impeded have, have an impact? I, that's, I mean, it's there's, my there's no, feeling. There's no ca from talking directly to the attorney who was doing the research, there's no case law on that. There's no there's case law on a town having the right of first refusal and being denied access to the property? I can't believe there's no case law on that. This can't be the first time something like this has happened. Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you to the previous speaker, you'd be surprised how many first times there are in court. Um, <laughs> that's, why the, that's why lawyers remain employed. But, but seriously, the issue that we have faced up until tonight is whether the town had the right of access prior to town meeting voting, taking the necessary steps to allow the selectmen to exercise the option. If town meeting appropriates the money tonight, it is then up to the selectmen to enforce the right of access as a condition of the purchase and sale and the exercise of the option. I can't stand here tonight and tell you that we will be on the property tomorrow or the next day, but certainly, I mean, my recommendation would be let the selectmen deal with that issue of access um, after town meeting decides whether by a two-thirds vote you want to purchase this How property. How can town meeting decide to purchase a piece of property when we have no information regarding the property? This is my problem. I would like to see the property purchased by town. I mean, am I being told, John, now, just let me finish my question. Am I being told that if we pass it at town meeting, it is now up to the five members of the Board of Selectmen whether we purchase that property or that we purchase that property, period. No, if you, if you, and, and John, jump in if I'm wrong. If, if town meeting votes tonight, approves this article, by right. two-thirds two vote, town meeting will have approved the purchase and approved the funding. And we're stuck, that's it? No, we're, we're, if the board so decides, they can never vote to move forward. This board, the Board of Selectmen uh, can never vote to move forward. I don't know about the rest of them, but I'm not likely to do that if it passes by two-thirds. But the board doesn't have to move forward. However, the point I want to correct that, that Mr. Giorgio stated earlier was that if we gain access to the property and we don't like it because it's wet. We can't say we don't want it anymore. Right. And, Is that right? He, and, that's and what he, I'm wondering. And he said, that's correct. Because we'll so, be sued by the owner. If, if, if you voted tonight, if you voted tonight, and we were to gain access tomorrow, and we decide we don't like it because it's even wetter than everybody ever thought, we can't get out. I okay, think, I think so based on in other words, it has to be reasonable um, concern. In, in other words, we go in, we do a 21 east site assessment, and it doesn't that's pass, that's then, we're that's right? then we're out. That's Right? Then we're out. Right. I think, right. We don't think, open ourselves up to being sued by the current owner if we impede the process of his sale to the, the current buyer? Oh, I, I, this I is just, you know what? I don't want to bet on that so one. This is so rushed. It's, it's really too bad. Um, I would have yeah, really, I, I, you know, it, it really is, John, you know, I, I'm, I'm so upset that we, were, we weren't allowed access to the property. I really think it's something that we should purchase. I personally would have liked to have looked at it as a one-time capital override. Everybody pay for it one year, and that's it, and we own it, and it would have been great. Um, we wouldn't have been carrying the $80,000 a year on um, our bonding rate, but um, i just a little confused. Thank you very okay. much. We've heard enough on this point, too. Thank you, Ms. McCall. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Gentlemen at the microphone, please state your name and address again. It's Mark Penny, 1201 Road. I've had some off and on conversations with some of the people I bought of the property. Um, I'll just say this. The price I get right now is about 12, 
about 1.2 million roughly. And, and, and the reason, you know, the price seems kind of high, obviously, but the, I think the, the, the developer, my understanding is he's putting that price out based on he will pay the owner 12, 1.2 million if he gets as much density housing in there as possible. That's my understanding. If, if, if he's only allowed five houses, like it's been mentioned, then he's not going to pay 1.2. He's going to pay about, you know, I don't know, five or six. That's what I'm hearing. So he has my understanding that the developer does intend on going with, you know, some kind of multiple housing on that property. And I don't know if it's 50 units or 100 units or 200 units, but let's say it is 100 units, and let's say it is two, two people per per household. That's two, I mean, two children per household. That's a couple hundred kids. I like this, I like to hear somebody from the school committee uh, tell me what pl the plan would be if there was 200 more kids in the bachelor school district uh, <laughs> five years from now. Mr. Murphy, to answer the Mr. Moderator, I'd like to clarify a point. The purchase price of the property is one million two fifty. It does not go down from there. It can potentially, however, go up. If the developer goes over a certain number of, of units and develops a certain part of the property, which may or may not be developable, then, is that a real word? Then, it's getting late. Then the price will go up. So the price is a firm one million two fifty. It's not going down. And for the developer, depending upon his yield, it may go up. If the town chooses to purchase it for one million two fifty and do nothing with it, then they're within their rights to do that. But understand, we haven't seen the property. We don't know everything that's there. Um, and it has a dramatic impact on, on the budget. And you were all here as we struggled through that budget. Some things passed and some things didn't. Give serious consideration to it. Thank you. Lady at the microphone, please state your name and address. Yes, it's Julie Brown on Southwick Road. I just wanted to say that I was here when we bought the Hillview, and it was a country club. It was a thriving business, but we bought it mainly because it was in our water protection. And it was a very good, self-supporting, um, revenue producing thing for the town. Now, at Switch River Park, I know all the dedicated volunteers that went through that, and I'm not opposed to having open space. However, that said, can anybody say, we just get a recreation administrator, um, how much more impact would having this property give to, be a burden to the town over the building, over the buying price? In other words, if we converted it even to just green space, what what would we get for an advantage versus a disadvantage? Mr. Murphy. I'll indirectly answer the question. No town department, including Parks and Recreation, stepped forward seeking the board to move forward in purchasing this parcel. There was no strong advocate for the purchase of this parcel. It's not the same as Ipswich River. It's not the same as Wheeler. It's not the same as Hillview. Um, that's my perspective on it. Thank you. Mr. O'Brien. Ed O'Brien, Fort Barbary Road. You bought the Hillview, the Ipswich River Park area, Wheeler Farm, based on knowledge, based on we knew exactly what we were getting into. 1.25 million, John is the number, one and a quarter million is a base price. Marketing, very simple. The developer would love us to think that was worth a lot more so he could push the price up, I would assume. Could be wrong on that one. I'm amazed the town meeting or the board or anybody else would even consider this without being able, and that puts huge pressure on the board of selectmen to make a decision that should primarily be set somewhere in this hallway, basically, town meeting. I'd be glad to vote on this. It might be a great idea. It might be the worst idea in the world. The, question, the problem is, I don't know. And 
no one here can tell us. For some reason, we, the town, has been denied access to this property. I assume there's a reason for it. Thank you. Gentlemen, at the microphone, please state your name and address, sir. Yes, Paul Dick, 36 Lindor. The motion talks about taking it by eminent domain. What is that process, and have, have they thought about using it, uh, acquiring it that way? Mr. George, would you? Mr. Murphy? That's, we're not taking it by eminent domain, truly. That's just standard language that the lawyer guy stuck in. <laughs> Mr. Simpson. Scott Stiffson, 251 Swan Pond Road. Um, I have to strongly disagree with what Mr. Murphy said about the town being obligated to purchase this property based on the vote tonight. Again, the, the, the language that was mentioned before clearly authorized the Board of Selectmen, but did not direct them to purchase. And, and, and the second thing I'd say is that, you know, until a 21E gets done, which would be part of the process that would go forward from here on out if the town um, approved this article tonight, you, you make a purchase decision based on a 21E, the information you gain um, when you review the site. That the notion that somehow you have to buy it set up sight unseen is, is just ridiculous. It wasn't true in any of the other purchases the town did for the Ipswich River. Um, it wouldn't be true now. Mr. Jervy. Steve Jervy, 21 Woodland Drive. And I'm angry at this point. As far as I can see, we're not being allowed access to this process so, so people can weasel out of the commitment that they made when they accepted the tax break. Maybe the eminent domain wording is just there for legal purposes, but I think we should be looking at it seriously, and I'd like to have the question answered. What would be required of us to take this by eminent domain? Mr. Pierce. I actually have, I have, have a question. Um, it seems to me that any time that you buy a piece of property, or even if uh, uh, if the town buys it, and I'm not sure uh, specifically in this uh, 61A situation, but if the town voted for the money tonight, and they decided that, the, that that's what they wanted to do, we then enter into a purchase and sale agreement with the uh, with the owner of the property, and then and then do we do? And when we do that, do we have the same rights as uh, anybody else that buys a piece of property? In other words. Um, you know, if it has hazardous material on it. I mean, the federal law says uh, that if this hazardous material, that the responsibility for the cleanup belongs to the owner that was there when, it, when the hazardous situation was created. But still, don't. my question is, do we have the same rights as any other buyer when we buy this piece of property and the same protections? Okay, uh, let's see. We haven't heard yet from the gentleman over there. Please, uh, Please state your name and I, what's the point of order? I believe they're looking for an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Jervy did. Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you to the previous speaker, as I understand the question, the question was, what is the process for an eminent domain taking when the land is uh, under Chapter 61A? Um, they're really two different things. Um, 61A gives the town 120 days to make a decision whether to exercise essentially the first option to purchase. And that's what the article before town meeting is tonight. There was language in the article to authorize an eminent domain taking, but, but that's standard language that allows us to clear when you're doing, in essence, a, 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 a friendly taking, when the price has already been established, it allows you to clear title. A, the, the town can exercise its power of eminent domain at any time on any property as long as there's a valid governmental purpose for acquiring the land. An eminent domain uh, uh, acquisition requires, again, a two-thirds vote of town meeting to authorize the acquisition. You, you, theoretically, you could do that. Uh, you could take an you could make an eminent domain taking on this land, you know, based on the current owner or the future owner. As long as there's a valid public purpose, you can ex 